Picture? Intro? Yeah, intro. Okay. Alright, Believe in Jeep fans, this is Tyler and my cousin Rich, Sasquatch. <laughs> Today we are going to well, well, he's going to weld his differential. I'm not going to weld it. I'm just going to film it. Because you have done this before, right? Yep. I've done it on a Dana 70, a Dana 60, and a couple of 14 bolts. Okay. This is the first time I've done it on a 10 bolt. And that's well, probably the poss worst. What possibly could go wrong? What could go wrong? <laughs> I mean, the, the only worst axle to link and lock would be like a Dana 35. <laughs> Sweet. All right. We're going to get to it. Okay, so the first thing we're doing is getting the, uh, the tie rod out of the way. A ball joint puller too, actually, so we pop that right out. Just whack the knuckle and we'll pop out. Ah! Awesome! <laughs> People in their stupid dress up items. Somebody siliconed chrome acorns on top of the bolts. Oh, so now it's stuck inside of my socket. It's not that stuck, it's just. We shove an extension up inside? That's out, it's just sticking. So this will take longer than expected. It always does. Yeah. You know, it's pretty bad. I didn't even know these acorns were on here. <laughs> so you haven't checked your fluid, have you? I haven't had, I've had this truck for like a year. How much I don't care about this front axle. <laughs> well, no water so far. That's a right. good sign. No bubbles. It's dark, but you got a rag. You can get a paper towel. You know, I should feel guilty. Why? For never having checked this. Well, like you say, it's a 10 bolt. Right? If I cared about it, I wouldn't be linking locking. <laughs> 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 Alright, so we pull the diff cover, drain the drain the gear oil out. Now you're going to hit it with some brake, brake clean. Because if you don't do this, your weld will not stick. Yep. And, you know, you gotta try and get as much brake cleaner out after you're done brake cleanering, or it'll catch on fire, which is. Fun, I'm, a, but I'm actually looking. I'm actually looking forward to that. <laughs> we can blow it up. That'll be cool. That's the last time I shaved my beard is when I blew up a container full of brake cleaner. <laughs> Doing this exact project I on wonder, the I wonder, 60. I wondered why you shaved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was doing the, the uh, Ford Dana 60, and. Uh, it was draining into one of those enclosed um, cans. And you lit the sucker on fire, huh? And I went to weld and it dropped down and it was all gaseous inside. It had just that little hole to escape and blew up the Oof. can. <laughs> Scared the crap out of me. <laughs> yeah, I bet it did. I mean, it worse is it singed up it my beard. Burned it your smelled beard so off. bad I had to shave it off. The wife was mad. <laughs> There's definitely a better way to do it than I'm doing it tonight, but it's a 10 bolt and I don't care. So <laughs> if it was, you know, 44 or a 60, the right way to do it would be um, tack it, pull it out, pull all the gears and stuff, or you can pull it out and if you get a, a bar across there and put a C-clamp on each side to hold the spider gear flat so that it's easy to get your axle shaft back in. To make sure that those spider gears stay lined up. Huh? Yeah, because if you, you know, just throw a big fat bead on the side, it'll twist. It'll, it'll pull up the other side. So when you rotate it and weld it, it'll be welded in crooked. Can you tack it? And, and then, then you'll yeah, roll. You, you throw a couple tacks, roll it, hit a tack on the other side to pull it back while it's still just lightly welded. And then you can throw a big bead, and it'll keep it from lifting. Advantage of 
welding them. It's it really, becomes a spool. And it's really inexpensive. You can only do it if you've got locking hubs, though. Yeah. And Or hydraulic steering. But you really only want to do it if you've got <laughs> locking hubs. You're making basically a locker. Yeah, it's but it's a, a permanent locker. Permanent locker. So but your, your hubs become your locker. Like, instead of engaging your ox, you get out and lock your hubs. And then it becomes a, uh, a locker spool. Yeah, a spool. Lockers release. Spools never do. Boom! Oh. Yeah, we're all good. You know, if you're trying to preheat them, I think we can get something get a, better yeah, than a barbecue a lighter. A little more fire than... What are you talking about? <laughs> I've got a propane tank in there. <laughs> no, we'd have to use like an oxyacetylene or something like that to get it good and hot. That would be... I got that too if you want. In addition to the right way to do it would be to heat it <laughs> to up. To heat them up? Yeah. Because of the... These are cast still. Yeah, I think you're supposed to have those so, at like 450 degrees before you weld them. Whatever, get them hot. <laughs> I don't own a temperature gauge and I'm not going to touch it to find out. And it's just a 10, 10 bolt, right? And it's just a 10 bolt. <laughs> so what I'm figuring is going to happen is the tacks will sort of warm it up. And then we'll lay down one good bead and that'll warm it up the rest of the way. And then we'll put two or three more beads on top of that to get the actual weld. It's very I scientific, say, yeah. This is not the right way to do it. It's just the way I'm doing it today. So, <laughs> so this is Work, a temporary fix. Works for me. Because yeah, I, I got a 14 bolt, uh, 44 and a 60 that I'm torn between what gets built first. So this is just so I can go have some real fun before I can afford to do real parts and stuff. All right, so tell me again why you're grounding on the ring gear. Um, because you don't want it to be on the outside of the bearing and as the electrical current passes through while you're welding it'll burn up your bearings or put little black marks on them. Well I guess them. this isn't going to work. I thought I had a good so, As much as I don't care about the axle I don't care to fix it more than I have you to. Don't want, you don't have to replace your seals and your bearings. Yeah. Eh? Yeah, when it when all of you in Bleepin' G Bland look at this weld, just remember that Rich used to have his own off-road sure. shop. <laughs> sure. Also had a parts cleaner. And used a welder every day. I don't scrub the light now. Alright, so basically you're welding the spider gear to the carrier. Yeah, so I welded the gear to the carrier and then I threw a couple of beads in between the teeth so to try a... and get it to lock together a little bit better. Yeah, okay. So the only thing you really don't want to weld in there is the crossbar. Because if you do that, you can't slide your shafts in to get them out. Yeah. I guess it's less important on a, a front axle. They don't have the C clip, but or a C clip axle you definitely don't want to weld that in because you got to be able to push the axle shaft in to get the to, C -clip to get out. the C clip out. Hmm? Hillbilly fixes. Yeah. <laughs> Redneck. They call it Lincoln it's, locking. It's not a fix. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not a fix. No. Okay. So now you're welding the smaller gears. Yeah, I'm to welding the. the, yeah, the the other spider gears to the top and bottom of the case. To the case, all right. Now, do you weld the gears to themselves, too? Uh, to each other? Yeah. Yeah, if I can reach them. I'll pretty much weld anything that moves, if I can reach it. 
and then weld them to each other. Except the ring and the pinion. But Please yeah, don't, don't weld the ring. Don't weld the ring to anything, and don't weld that crossbar to anything. Yeah. Alright. More or less. More or less. We'll do the same thing to the other side. Once it's all done, we got to make sure and go through and scrape out as much spatter as we can because that will screw up your bearings pretty efficiently. So that's my warm-up weld <laughs> to warm the metal. So, yeah, you got, you've got the cast casting warmed up now. So you're just trying to clean out as much of the spatter and yeah. crap as you can right now? Yeah. So that's why, you know, ideally you would take it out, take it apart, put it on a bench. You take know, your ring and pinion out. Take, take your, your ring, ring off. Out. Yeah. All the stuff that you care about. Your bearings. Yeah. Heat up the case because it's cast. Case. You get a better weld that way. So there's... I say this just happens to be the way we're doing it today because I don't care about this axle or how long it lasts. But if you care about your axle, you know, take it out, warm it up. You know, when it's out, it'll be a lot easier to reach everything and just spend a lot of time cleaning up after yourself. So that crap doesn't get end yeah. up in your bearings. This is about the only part I'll take any time really doing. You know, we'll run out of time here tonight, and I'll finish it up in my own driveway. You just don't want any of this getting into the bearings because even though I don't care about the carrier or the axle itself, I don't want to chew up the bearings for no reason. You know, time yeah. is free when you're doing it in your driveway. So, take the time and get as much spatter out as you can. That's pretty much it. So, that is one way to link and lock an axle. It's not, not really not the correct it's, way. It's not the correct, not way, the correct but we, way, but it is a way. It is a way. We did so, explain the correct way to do it. Yeah, more correct. Because the, the correct. most correct way to do it is just get a locker <laughs> or, you know, an actual spool. But some, some of us are poor, though. 200 bucks is out of, outside my budget today. Yeah, some, so of, some of us are poor. We're See, at about 37 cents at this point. What did that What did that take in it? Less than an hour? Less than an hour. Less than an hour. Yeah. So... If you want to try this, go ahead and try it, but it's not our fault if you screw it up. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Don't forget to visit BelieveInJeep.com. And, uh, got anything else to say? Let it cool slowly if possible. Good, good important tip. Yeah, warm, warm it up, it. clean Cut, it really well, and then it up and let, it cool slowly. let it cool as slow as possible. If you like live in New Mexico or Arizona, stick it out in the sunshine in the middle of the day in August and just let it bake for... Because the slower it cools, the less likely it's going to crystallize the cast and crack. Interestingly enough, you're not going to let it cool slowly, are you? No, not even a little bit. <laughs> All Dude, right. It's like 50 degrees and I'm driving home with the diff cover <laughs> off. Who cares? <laughs> what could go wrong? Right? All right, we'll see you next time. <laughs> There'll be a follow-up video where it's like, and it snapped going up the dirt. It exploded. <laughs> oh, that was awesome. What is wrong with the front of his truck? <laughs> it's <is> broken. <laughs> Correct.